It's finally finished, but we're still stuck in supernatural purgatory. This podcast is a rewatch of all 15 seasons and hopefully our way to finally escape the show. Join us once a week for a fun, informal discussion on each episode and leave comments on any specific plot points you'd like us to discuss. I'm so proud of myself. That's the first time I did that without looking at it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, I, I had it in front of me, but I didn't read it properly. So, I, like, it was just, just came out. I'm so proud <laughs> like, of you. Like, word vomit. Awesome. Oh. Hello. So, yes. This week. We are back. I'm excited for this. Uh, I, I'm really glad we watched this episode. It was good. It was a well needed episode. Oh, yes. Th- this reminds me of like, this gives an indication of that the show can be fun as well as like serious. You know, like we've had very serious episodes. We've had a couple of funny like i guess unintentionally funny episodes <laughs> um but th- this one has actually was in like an intended funny episode yes i think this is one of like this is why supernatural endured for as long as it did because yes. they can get real heavy and then an episode like this will come along and just sort of throw you for a loop yeah. like, oh yeah <laughs> you're funny <laughs> Ah, Supernatural is not a horror show. Just, no. no. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Which, I mean, by the name of the episode, I was like, oh no, what's going to happen in this one? But like, as soon as I read the description last week, I was like, oh, okay, no, I remember this one. I was, I was definitely had a very good Friday night watching this episode compared to last Friday. <laughs> where uh, I had tissues and tissues. <laughs> yeah, I was actually laughing while watching this you know by myself (laughs) of course (laughs) so i mean this episode is called hell house uh, you know so the title doesn't really explain the content i guess of this episode Um, no one thing i found out which i thought was really funny is that this actually aired on march the 30th like 2006 and Mm -hmm. when this podcast is out it's almost exactly (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> 15 years ago almost i don't that's, know why that's very cool that's right yeah. it's coming out on 28th yeah huh syncing updates Ooh, <laughs> <spooky>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure there's gonna be other uh, other episodes that are gonna actually like line up completely and it's gonna be really weird yeah i love a kind of coinky dink <laughs> <laughs> this was also the first time that apparently it aired on a Thursday. Before this, the episodes have been airing on a Tuesday, and I know we we all know and love a supernatural Thursday. So this is um, true. So on IMDb, this episode is rated eight point four out of ten, and I feel like it actually deserves a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I'm not sure who who voted it down hmm? and yeah. why. Probably it wasn't serious enough. I didn't actually read any reviews for this. Um, yeah, no, neither would I. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, fine. Um, I liked it. Uh, so the director was Chris Long and the writer was Trey Calloway. Um, so I, maybe that's why we're getting a different tone here because we're seeing some different people um, mm-hmm. working on this episode. And <laughs> there were a lot of pop culture references in this episode as well. And... I, I struggled to keep track of all of them, I'll be honest, but I did try. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I, I did notice some, but I, I did not make notes. So I like, I'm, I made notes of like the really big, obvious ones. I think I was just, I was just, I, I really just enjoyed watching the episode. So like, basically means I did not write very good notes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, for this one. I did it a bit different this week as well. So yeah, let's see, let's see how it goes. Okay, should we get into it? I think we should. So we're starting in Richardson, Texas, two months ago, um, and we have we kind of talked about this before about starting um, episodes sort of in the past and then coming back. I don't even feel like they needed to say this was two months ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I felt the same. I I felt the same way. I was like, oh, what's gonna happen? Like, 
but so it cut I'll, it makes sense like in the long run as to like yeah. what happens that it makes sense to be two months ago but they never really explain why it would be two months ago if you know what i mean i'll, I'll get to that um, okay when when the the monster is revealed so we see four young people three guys and a girl and they are at a creepy cabin in the woods a really real way to describe it i think and they're kind of joking around and they're obviously there for I don't get the appeal like we spoke about this before I don't get the appeal of like scoping out scary places at night time yeah. <laughs> um, neither do I neither do I. I I guess I didn't grow up in a small town where there's nothing to do yeah but so. go to like the urban legends so they're kind of joking around going into this house and they go down to the basement and it's like a typical horror basement full of creepy jars of stuff and they do <laughs> i love this horror trope uh this is one of my favorite ones where there's like a, a jokester in the gang and he's like oh, there's yeah. nothing to be scared of guys and they're all looking behind him like looking horrified this whole thing reminded me of the actual movie cabin cabin in the woods like yes. their whole their whole attitudes like change and stuff but like even even when they're like the jock i guess like the <laughs> he's kind of a bit of a jerk rather than not a jock because you can be a jock and not a jerk he the way he taunts the group is yeah. even like so stereotypical i guess I don't know. it's it, yeah it, it, it's definitely yeah no you're right it's definitely that like cabin in the woods like horror movie trope going on so i mean they like i said they go down and this guy's joking around and then something behind him is like spooking them out and they mm-hmm. find a a girl that you don't see her face, like sort of hanging from the rafters, and then title card. So, da, da, da. so before the title card, I think the 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 jerk of the group does his best impression of a female horror movie screen. I thought it <laughs> yes. was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> But it's yeah. just like, oh. <laughs> so I think that was quite a good impression. Yeah, yeah it was pretty good. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like we're getting there with the sort of like prelude, someone dies title card thing. I think we're getting there. I think it's, it's, it's come, becoming a thing. Yeah. We then see the Impala driving along, apparently Interstate 35, which I guess is in Texas. I don't know my American geography. I'm just going to say fine. Yeah, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I could look at a map, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. So this starts off the first of like a few little bits that are peppered through this episode for sort of no reason other than to be funny. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So Dean's driving, <laughs> Sam's sleeping like with his mouth wide open. Because <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> Dean gets a plastic spoon and like puts it in his mouth and then takes a picture with his, like, Motorola flip phone. <laughs> How did you ever see anything on that? And then wakes him up by singing along really loudly to this uh, the song on the radio. Um, mm-hmm. And I've seen that, I've seen this moment, like, gift so many times, where, like, Sam wakes up and seems, like, sort of drumming on the steering wheel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. It is, yes, definitely. So the first prank has begun. Um, yes. Sam makes a reference to previous prank wars. <laughs> <laughs> and how they escalate. <laughs> Man, we're not kids anymore, Dean. We're not going to start that crap up again. Starting what up? That prank stuff. It's stupid and it always escalates. Oh, what's the matter, Sam? Are you afraid you're going to get a little nair in your shampoo again, huh? All right. Just remember you started it. Oh, bring it on, Baldy. Yes, because Dean says, do you want Nair in your shampoo again? And <laughs> so cruel. Yes. Uh, Though, so, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he he makes, like, a little bit later on, he makes a comment of, like, he, says, he calls him Baldy. But, yeah. like, Nair doesn't take out your hair straight away. Like, you have to leave it on. Yeah, and then it all. So it's just kind of like he would have actually gone bold, but yeah, it was, it's like it was so. Still, still I feel funny. like it might have been patchy, you know. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. <laughs> but 
One so one point here, and I'm, I'm going to make this point now, so I don't have to make it later. Is I, I haven't spoken about it in a while. The music in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so there, most of the music is the same, apart from the two Blue Oyster Cult um, songs that they use in this episode, which oh, of course are kind of important <laughs> for reasons that became clear later on. Um, so this is the first one. This song is Fire of Unknown Origin by Blue Oyster Cult that Dean is singing along to. I have no idea how they took this out in the Netflix because he is actually singing along to it. Um, you know, I wasn't, I guess because you're, you're paying attention. Well, <laughs> hmm. I'm going to have to go back and watch it because it seemed to like to sync up. So I don't know. Yeah, is it actually different? Yeah, so in the Netflix version, the song is Jaded Little Love Song by Terra Mara. And maybe, like, he was just mouthing along to the words, so maybe it just syncs up kind of okay. You know? Yeah. Like, I guess you're you're more focusing on the the prank ensuing. Yes. Than, like, Dean singing along. So, okay, yeah. that's kind of interesting, because in the Netflix version, so, does he turn up the radio? Yes, yours? yes, yeah, he does, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So that matched up, because I was like, what? I thought the reason why he woke up was just because he turned up the... But, um, yeah. Huh. Well, I guess I'm going to be having to sink some money into that ridiculously <laughs> large box set that comes out, and hope for the best that it's the actual music. Yeah. Um, oh, that's something I want to know. If anyone's going to buy that box set, can you tell us if it has the original music <laughs> in before we spend like whatever it is, like $350? Thanks for taking one for the team. <laughs> yes. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> so um, Sam kind of explains why they're here. He says they're hunting a misogynistic ghost um, who only seems to ki- apparently kill women. But the weird thing is, is that despite sort of things that he's read about this girl they found in the basement the police didn't find a body and so Dean kind of questions him about where he found out this information and it turns out Sam's been on some weird websites and he <laughs> found hellhoundslair.com and so Dean is suspicious because this is a dodgy source <laughs> yeah yeah and they they kind of like make a they kind of make a side point of like why are we doing this after that heavy episode because they're like oh well maybe we Sam's kind of like maybe we shouldn't have split up from John but let's hunt in the meantime until we meet back up again <laughs> so okay fine <laughs> I'll take it it's good they basically are like well where do we start looking and they're like well what where do we go in any small town in Texas or any small town <laughs> and um, they go to like a local like a local diner, um, like 50s diner, I guess. And, okay, a little bit of a side note here. <laughs> I I just watched, um, okay, I'm giving away when we recorded this, but um, <laughs> I just watched The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And the Falcon does this too. How is it that main characters can, like, drive up directly to where they need to be like they go <laughs> suspiciously close to like a table there's no other cars around there's like a fence but like no they can just go right up they don't have to park in an actual parking spot <laughs> like the james bond phenomena where he can literally just park outside a hotel or mi5 just fine just pulls up yeah <laughs> no parking ticket um <laughs> well so we we have seen them get a parking ticket though only once That's in true. um in hookman like when they were they're doing their dodgy like drive by of the sorority house oh, yes. um <laughs> so they they are not immune but it's still like it's so funny i like, just like i'm gonna park right in front where you're not really supposed to i can never it's, find it's... a parking space <laughs> <laughs> so anyway if, if someone can answer i mean obviously it's for reasons but like it's just it makes me laugh. Like when I uh, the reason why I noticed it in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is because it's like he drove down a pier and like there's literally no other cars and there's a whole bunch of pedestrians. Yeah. So it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just drive uh, places. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so they they go um interview three of the four of the the kids or 
they didn't really look like kids. I thought they were in, supposed to be in college, but I guess they're like yeah. um, seniors, maybe. So like eighteen. And it's kind of it's kind of cool how they did this. So like they each kind of give a little bit of detail, and then like when they start describing what's in the house, they all give different details. Yeah, um, I like a montage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like the wall colors were different. The the symbols were different, and like uh, even the girl who they had who was hanging she had black uh red blonde hair like none of them could actually give a real description which i mean it kind of makes sense because it had been two months so they probably i'm trying not to really think about it too much yeah that's true there's a quite a famous psychological experiment just to get scientific on you so they did an experiment with people where they got someone to walk past them with a pen and then they asked them to describe the person. And they were pretty good at like describing the person. And then they got someone to walk past some people with a knife. And they couldn't really describe that person. Because all their attention was focused on the fact that they were carrying a knife. So actually, oh. in dangerous situations, your memory tends to be worse. Because you're focused <laughs> on the danger rather than your surroundings. So it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't remember all these little details. I mean, but th- this is definitely leading into like the whole... Did they re- is there really something there or not? Because Dean's yeah. again, it, it feels like whenever Sam brings up a case, <laughs> Dean is skeptical. Like he's never like he never jumps right on board with anything, even though he wants Sam around. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel the same. I think Dean thinks he well he knows he's the more experienced one, I guess. So if he's taking the lead on something. I think it's just I I think it's just a sibling thing. Like you know better than them. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're probably right. He's he's the older sibling, and like, I mean, though at this point, hasn't he proven himself a little bit? Like, he hasn't come up with a dud case. I mean, obviously, he's never going to come up with a dud case because it's supernatural. Yeah. But like, he hasn't come up with a dud case yet. <laughs> yeah. I guess this is Dean's journey to trusting Sam to find cases. <laughs> <laughs> but then he did find this one on a website called hellhoundslair.com. So this is true. This yeah. is true. I would maybe be a little bit skeptical, but no, I get it. Okay, so this obviously we were we were much younger when the internet was around. Yeah, like when it first came out. Then they are, like, they are like seven to ten years older than we were at this point. Yeah. Do you think Dean is like skeptical of the internet beyond, you know, his his um favor for, you know, his pastime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, at that time the internet like 2006 was not I mean, the internet now is not that reliable either, but it was even mm. worse back then. It, like anybody and everybody made websites just like however do you remember yeah because it makes me think of like things that used to go around on the internet when we were that age and i know there was one that we definitely got creeped out by at school where there was like an email chain going round about like a girl that would like kill you if you if you know what i mean yeah no i do remember that one <laughs> so yeah it's basically it was it was really it it still happens on the internet now it's like oh if you don't pass this on like <laughs> it's so it's so dumb but yeah I, there definitely were urban legends and things that were floating around on the internet at that time and i can see how you'd be skeptical of them if you'd seen this kind of stuff in in real life as people just making things up because things like creepypasta like they they were never collected they were literally individual like yeah. each one of those like creepypasta stories would be a website basically <laughs> yeah they weren't curated like they were now you you had to know someone who had seen it to find out about it, it mm-hmm. so it was like it, like sam says later it was like a game of telephone where someone mm-hmm. would have to tell you in real life that this exists and then you'd go look it up the internet experience was so different back then it really was it really was <laughs> <laughs> So I, th- I guess this is also part of his skepticism because he's he's not an internet user at this point. I don't think he ever is. Not really. Like even the last few seasons, like he still kind of like pecks at the keyboard. He's not particularly comfortable. Yeah, he does around like man technology. Typing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam's definitely much more comfortable with it. I mean, it makes sense because he was in college. He would have had to use the internet 
for mm -hmm. you know but i mean still it was, it was only just coming into that kind of, you know people using it for stuff like that ah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I like that i like that i decided yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> um <sighs> but so the 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 three of them the three witnesses they um all point to their buddy craig or craig <laughs> uh depending on who who you talk to and uh so they they go find this boy and he's working in a record store at a record shop and they, they pose as reporters and they use their real names again mm -hmm. and so craig tells them about the the legend behind the hell house that this guy uh mordecai murdoch had um six daughters and it was during the depression in the 1930s and instead of seeing them like starve to death he was like i'm gonna string them up oh, gonna kill them <laughs> <laughs> like what um but so before as as um he's explaining like the the legend oh. dean picks up a record do you did you i looked up what it was it's yeah. a kansas record <laughs> point of no return yes so yeah he picks up this kansas record so we have to remember at this point the the Kansas song is not the the it's not the song, and it doesn't that album doesn't actually have that song on that no. record, but it does have my Death other Wind. favorite Kansas song. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I cannot listen to that song without bawling. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I can I really enjoy that song. Like I I said this to you before, like. It makes me it makes me sad in like a happy way. It does. It it just like it makes me feel okay for feeling sad. Like it's, it's I don't know. It's I find it comforting to be sad listening to that song. <laughs> I I think it's a song that you really can only listen to while you're driving in the evening and the sun's going <laughs> down. <laughs> I to be honest, I think that's every Kansas song. <laughs> that, yeah. Right? You is uh, they're like they're road trip music. I mean yeah, just just by the name of the, the band, like who nobody lives in Kansas. Sorry, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody drives through Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they definitely gave me an appreciation for what I now am calling road music. <laughs> <laughs> road trip music, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> can I just say though, they're concentration slash paying attention face was so funny like it was it was very much like acting <laughs> i know i know i've said this before and like because they did the same thing in um phantom traveler when they're yeah. listening to jerry i don't know why he, i remember his name anyway you know how he like sam had steeped his fingers and all this kind of stuff yeah. but they they weren't they weren't doing that because they're standing up but like jared's like pouty face and like <laughs> it's almost like they were doing like a softer version of their eventual like blue steel <laughs> it's so true yeah. <laughs> i've said it before just... making a concentrating face is hard i feel like having to <laughs> sustain it i think is difficult and look like you're paying attention maybe it's just the directing style because i think maybe it's harder when you focus on their face and then the other guy's face maybe if you just have a conversation where you can see all three people it would be less yeah. awkward <laughs> definitely uh, definitely yes it, just, just, it made me laugh I, yeah. I i think also it kind of it kind of plays into the tone of this episode a little bit like it's mm -hmm. it's much lighter light-hearted much more light-hearted and like yeah it's just it's just generally more silly so oh definitely. it's okay to have silly faces <laughs> yeah i also want to take a moment just a moment for record shops because yeah uh, as a teenager that was the staple of where you'd hang out while you were wasting time <laughs> this is um, true this is true so we we actually hung out in different groups your group used uh, to go outside um do you it was an, an mvc i was mvc <laughs> okay i thought so i i was it was on the tip of my tongue but i couldn't i didn't want to commit to it um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was because really cool my hang hung out, yeah. Actually, no, because I wasn't there. I hung out with the real cool kids. <laughs> no, I didn't. I really didn't. I was with the reject group. You were the cool kids. I was with the reject group. 
<laughs> we used to specifically not walk past there so we wouldn't have to deal with you guys. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> no one believes I was popular at school now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was... To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Was... Anyway, that, that was... That was a different era. <laughs> yeah. What do teenagers even do now? Like, I, you know, I don't know. And I don't really want to know. No. They can just keep doing what they're doing. Like, I'm pretty sure, well, obviously with the pandemic, they are not doing what we used to do. They used to just hang around in parks, under bridges, outside music <laughs> shops. You, just generally yeah. loitering. <laughs> we really did. We really, yeah. really did. But yeah, that yeah. that was my nostalgic moment for this week. Yeah, oh. no, and it, like, yeah, it was it was good times, good times. <laughs> um, so they they now are at the the hell house as it is called during the day, and they have their EMF out. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> why does it? Why does the EMF reader not work now? Okay. You're asking me a science question. <laughs> okay, no, because let me let me explain why I'm like I was so yeah. because they've been in like modern houses with electricity around and like other like even in the air hangar that they were at the Phantom Traveler and it it didn't crap out but they're in front of like a a dying transformer and it doesn't work. Here's my explanation, and I'm sure someone will correct me. <laughs> I think it's to do with the voltage. I'm not good on electricity. Because, like you said, there's a transformer, and it's higher in the poles than it is in the house because it has to transform. This is such right. a bad explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the proximity of the electrical poles rather than like house voltage that's causing the problem. But you're right, they've been in more modern places where this should have been more of an issue. They're only doing it to dunk on um, Harry and Ed, who appear later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. That I, it's, it's, for, it's for the bit, so it's, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, but I was just like, what? Because technically yeah. all electrical stuff should interfere with the EMF reader, I think. I'm not sure how they work, because they don't. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't you're not sure how the, the theory behind what how they work. <laughs> yeah, not like yeah. I don't really get how they're supposed to work. I know they're looking for mm-hmm. spikes in electrical activity. I think, but surely that would happen whenever you bring it near to a light, so some kind of live circuit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Someone correct me. I actually am interested and would like to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they they enter the house and like they're all looking at different symbols around the building and mm-hmm. Sam's looking at the the upside down cross the in, inverted crucifix and then he says you know it wasn't until the 1960s that this symbol became the symbol for satanism the reverse cross has been used by satanists for centuries but this sigil of sulfur didn't show up in san francisco until the 60s huh. exactly why you never get laid dean then says i know exactly why you never get laid i'm like <laughs> He's probably not looking to get laid either. Let's be real. Like yeah. Jessica's still like in, in on his mind. Like he's not gonna start sleeping around. Yeah, at least I'm alone. <laughs> yeah, that was just it was just so it was. I know he's he's made references like that before, but like it was just mm. this one bother you? Like I'd, yeah, let, that's something about it. Let Sam heal. He's real ready when he's ready. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, oh. and then they both come across one that they don't know what it is, and but like Dean's like, I know this, I I've seen it before. Hey, what about this one? You seen this one before? No, I have somewhere. And this must have been really frustrating. There must have been some people watching this episode when it aired. Like, I know that too. Where is it from? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Or that there are those people who like know instantly too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And we're probably frustrated as well because they're like, it's from <laughs> X. I'm not going to say what it is because it gives it away. But yeah, oh, give it a mystery. <laughs> and then they they hear like a a noise somewhere in the house, 
and so they go they go look and it's ed and harry <laughs> i just wrote travis and aj <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's um it's it's harry and ed so harry played by Travis Wester and Ed played by AJ Buckley as we all know I'm sure appear later on in other seasons as well so yeah um, yeah. yeah and so they have like this industrial size like light <laughs> that they just shined in their face like yeah. I'm surprised they, they didn't go blind to be honest <laughs> and like this huge camcorder like it probably takes like full size cassette tapes that's how yeah. big it is <laughs> <laughs> And they introduce themselves as professional paranormal investigators, and they even have business cards. <laughs> I love this because it's they're talking. It's it's just so funny to me because they're talking down to Sam and Dean so much. Yes, I, and I I love I love jokes in shows where the audience are in on the joke. Do you know what I mean? They're in on yeah. the joke because uh-huh. they know <laughs> um, <laughs> that they're not the amateurs here. On their business card, it says their names, so they're Harry Spangler and Ed Sedmore. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, we belong here. We're professionals. Professional what? Paranormal investigators. There you go. Take a look at that, boys. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ed Sedmore and Harry Spangler. Yeah. Um, did you know this was a Ghostbusters reference? I did not. So the two characters in Ghostbusters is Winston Zedmore and Egon Spangler. Um, oh. So they've taken their last names from them, which is great as well, because obviously when we get to Ghost Facers, it kind of will make sense. Yes. <laughs> so I thought it was like, I thought it's really funny because technically Sam and Dean are actually paranormal investigators. That's, yeah. that's the, that is the title that they would be given if they if they wanted to but i mean it sounds obviously much much cooler to be a hunter rather than a paranormal <laughs> investigator <laughs> yeah that's completely true and just like um, how harry and ed are dressed as well compared to sam and dean like they look the thing is they're kind of dressed similarly but somehow more nerdy yeah i think it's the it's the shoes and the trousers Mm-hmm. I think it's those two things because, like, when you see like a whole outfit of them, oh, can we just say? I, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned this yet, uh-huh. but the leather jacket's back. <gasps> yes, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> this um, whole episode was just like, oh, that jacket, yes, thank you, I love it, it's so nice, and so the color I, pop. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, no, he does for like the majority of the episode. <laughs> So I think, like, so Sam and Dean, they have, like, just, like, jeans and boots, mm-hmm. whereas they have, like, Converse's and, like, cargo pants, <laughs> like, yeah. baggy car- cargo pants. There's just something about, and they're, like, khaki coloured, too. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was, like, the fishing jacket, I think. <laughs> yeah. And so they, they kind of get, they, they, it reveals that they're behind the Hellhounds Lair uh, website. <laughs> it's just the, the line that... Um, I think it's was it Ed or I think it's Ed who says we know we know who you guys are, and like they genuinely look scared when they say <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, we know who you guys are too. Oh yeah, <clears throat> amateurs looking for ghosts and cheap thrills. Yeah, so if you guys don't mind, we're trying to conduct a serious scientific investigation here. It went through my mind as well, like, wait, 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 are they going to say something? Because they do run a paranormal investigation website. Maybe they do know who they are. <laughs> Maybe, but then they also ask, like, Dean then asks, oh, have you ever seen a ghost? And they're like, once, something moved in the house, and it was a ghost. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it's just like, they are, but they're they're not. <laughs> not me. Yeah. I spoke about this in Asylum, but specifically relating to these guys. They must be really bad paranormal investigators to have not come <laughs> up against anything supernatural because the world as we see it through this lens is that it's like teeming with supernatural activity. <laughs> so how bad do you have to be to do that for your job and not find a ghost? <laughs> right. Like even even if they like even if they went to well known haunted places, 
mm-hmm. which is exactly what was in Asylum. It was a well-known haunted place. <laughs> yeah. There would, they would see it. <laughs> they would see a ghost. Like, they would have seen one. So, oh, Harry and Ed. And so, I think it also doesn't help. There's a shot of Sam and Dean and um, Harry and Ed, like, <laughs> almost side by, not side by side, but like, stood in front of each other. Yeah. They are giants. <laughs> yeah. Like Sam and Dean are giant, and it's just it was, and that they're the thing is well, Harry and Ed are probably average sized men too, like probably yeah. like around I don't know five foot ten, mm-hmm. um, but like compared to these two, they're like huge. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like how terrifying must it be to meet the Winchesters in in real life? They're, they're two quite physically intimidating dudes, like. <laughs> anyway yeah and what's what's even worse is that like sam who's normally the like empathetic one is still <laughs> still teasing these guys he lets them explain emf to to them um knowing that it's all wrong and dean's just making faces at him behind their backs in the background they're fully like bullying these two guys <laughs> as soon as they meet them yeah <laughs> It was uh, it was definitely a very good like it was uh, it was so good but like it's it's kind of maybe maybe it was the the attitude that they gave them definitely. this is the reason why that they they acted reacted in this way because like in general they're quite understand like you said Sam is usually quite empathetic but like and their understanding of of people yeah but I mean because I'm I'm thinking back to like um. Wendigo, when you know he, they're trying to convince the family like not to go out into the woods and stuff, like they can they can not want to involve the public in like hunting, but I guess like they're interfering, so they're probably more annoyed by that. I mean, so this is how I saw it. They have the attitude that women get when they're being like mansplained their job. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, because they are really cocky and like yeah we know more than you about this ed and harry are the the um actuallys of um (laughs) paranormal investigation exactly exactly (laughs) yeah so they meet they meet harry and ed and uh so sam is coming out of city hall and like he has like his notebook in front of him Mm -hmm. and he meets up with dean and he tells him that there was never a mordecai in this area uh, Murdoch, it was a Martin yeah. and he didn't have six daughters but he actually had two sons and there's no, mm-hmm. never an indication that anybody murdered anybody and then Dean had gone to the police and they couldn't find anyone matching the missing like matching the description of the girl mm-hmm. uh, as a missing person so Dean is just like saying look this is a this is a hoax like there's nothing there's nothing here the hell hound guys like made it up and <laughs> so Dean gets in the car and like Sam's kind of hanging out a little bit outside and yeah Dean turn turns on the car and like the music's being turned up all the way all the way up and the um the wipers have been turned on yes so that was his retaliation prank can i just say my older brother did this to me not in my car <laughs> in in uh my parents house when i was a little yeah. kid it's a legit repressed memory i have no recollection of this happening but <laughs> after it happened i was afraid of loud noises for the longest so, <laughs> sorry laughing like, at your pain <laughs> it was and i i like i know that if i if i've turned up the music in my car i have to turn it back down because i'm gonna scare myself <laughs> because literally my my brother had traumatized me <laughs> by doing the same thing oh it's all right give me all this information so when we travel together it's all good oh Um. thanks it's okay i i know you don't like fish so um (laughs) we can't start this it would never end i know it would be really bad (laughs) oh yeah i i love that his little like scared reaction um yeah so um then we are then back at the hell house at night and mm-hmm. there's like a, a gr- two girls and a guy and it's kind of 
it's a little bit of like sexual harassment because like yeah the, well no it's not even a little bit it co- totally is the one of the girls is has been dared to go into the hell house and get a jar from the mm-hmm. basement or kiss the the dude and she's like i'd rather go into the house yeah so get better friends <laughs> like yeah. if someone i know it's a small town so you can't you know this your friend pool is limited mm-hmm. but like no <laughs> get <Yeah>. better friends <laughs> or like yeah just go home you don't need those people's just go home. approval <laughs> no not at all like yes it's high school or whatever but like at the same time we find out that she's she is 18 because she's going to ut which i guess is university of texas maybe mm-hmm. so like no <laughs> yeah like... anyway so she enters the house and there's like spooky sounds happening like the sharpening of a knife which we didn't i mean during the day there wasn't anything so that's why we didn't hear anything i have to say i liked how they like focused on the chicken feet <laughs> i was like what <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> uh, instead of a dramatic zoom this week they just did a bizarre focus <laughs> yep that, that's cool <laughs> <laughs> and she's like walking through the house and like uh she gets to the basement i do like how they use the mirror in this scene like i thought they were gonna put the, the ghosty spirit in the in the mirror but they never do but it, it yeah. does give you that kind of like oh something's gonna happen <laughs> And she she picks up a jar, but then she ends up dropping it. Yeah. And the ghost kills her. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad that the only thing I could think of while I was watching this scene was how bad that jar must have smelled when she dropped it. Yeah. 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 Had if it was like jarred when it was in like the nineteen thirties. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that's it. Like oh, yeah, I really thought of that. The, the ghost has officially now killed a person. So the next day, um, the police have called off the house. Like Dean and Sam rock up, and Dean's saying, well, well, maybe we missed something. So they decide to come back at night time to investigate the house. So they're hiding in some bushes <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, the, as, the, as the cops are on patrol around the house with flashlight, I guess to stop any more kids coming into the house or like messing around and stuff. Um, mm mm-hmm. And then very loudly, Harry and Ed turn up. Yes. <laughs> yep. Very, very, very loudly. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Dean's like, I got an idea. Who are you going to call? <gasps> hey, you. Oh, 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 oh. And he yells, who are you going to call? Because <laughs> they are dressed like the the ghostbusters they have their like boiler suits and like yeah night vision goggles like the whole get up i have to say the police in this small town are not great like <laughs> how did sam and dean hear them before the police did and not like chase them off but the police do do see them because they like freak out like uh, ed and harry freak out and so they go off on a little chase yeah um and so they they manage to get back into the house and like they they walk past the symbol again. <laughs> Dean points at it. I was like, I know the symbol from somewhere. <laughs> and they they get to the the basement, and then Dean <laughs> does the like. I don't I don't even know how to describe this, but like he dares Sam to drink something out of the jar. They say I'm gonna dare you to take a swig of this. The hell would I do that? I double dare you. Who looks at that and is like, yo, dude, drink it. Like, who does that? Who does that? <laughs> Obviously, Sam doesn't fall for it because Sam's not, like, he doesn't really fall to peer pressure or anything like that. But, like, oh, why would... And he's like, he even does, like, I double dare you. And I swear he was going to say a triple dog dare you. <laughs> I swear he was going to say that. Like, and Sam was going to give in. Just because it yeah. was like a triple dare, so of course you had to do it on the triple dare. But you like, have to go the triple. <laughs> oh no, you don't. You don't. Sam. No, you um. don't. <laughs> Absolutely don't. It's just another yeah. case of Dean touching things that he shouldn't be touching. <laughs> yes. Stop touching the things. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, they hear a noise in the cupboard and they sort of get all 
prepared to open it and Sam jerks it open and these rats sort of run out. I hate rats. You'd rather it was a ghost? Yes. Which is of course an Indiana Jones reference. <laughs> I love that. that. Sam says like you'd rather it was a ghost. He's like, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I like the little Indiana Jones reference there because we know that Dean's Harrison Ford, right? So it's Indiana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the ghost appears behind Dean all of a sudden and it has an axe and they both shoot at it many times they, they're carrying shotguns so we assume they have rock salt and they confirm that um, mm-hmm. but, it's, but it doesn't seem very effective um, <laughs> it was like, like Pokemon style <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then all the jars get smashed and again I'm just thinking like the smell and they kind of fight the ghost. <laughs> I didn't know. This is a sidebar. I didn't know who was fighting the ghost. It was so dark when I was watching this yeah. episode. I no. was like, who was shouting what? I don't know. <laughs> they, just, they fight the ghost. They fight the ghost. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what you can say about it. So outside we see Harry and Ed um, and they're sneaking along. I think Harry has like night vision goggles on. <laughs> like He says like, maybe we should go. And Ed says like, well, what would John Edward do? John Edward is a psychic medium who investigates haunted houses. Again, like <laughs> another little reference. And then just as they're saying this, like Sam and Dean come like busting out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, run! <laughs> it, they were trying so hard to be nerdy here. I love it. Because no one would ever say this. Like, Yeah. Sweet Lord of the Rings. It's so bad. Did Charlie ever get to meet the ghost facers? I don't think she did. I don't think she did. That would have been hilarious. That would have been great. She would have schooled them so hard. So hard. Because, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, like, yeah. Though, okay, I do have to say, Supernatural can bring back characters and not kill them. Yeah. Because they do it with these guys. That's true. They never get killed. Yeah. But Charlie, no, she got killed. <laughs> bringing it down there no, I'm joking. i know um, i know i just i thought i thought about this at the end of the episode and i was like god damn it anyway <laughs> yeah that's fine yeah but you're yes right. sweet lord of the rings like <laughs> okay <laughs> so um harry and ed get arrested um but sam and dean get off scot-free because they can run real fast <laughs> with their long legs <laughs> yeah exactly because <laughs> they are giants they go back to the motel and Dean's kind of sat on the bed drawing the symbol that he's seen. This this motel is super interesting. I don't know if you noticed, but it's kind of like a Western theme. It's got like bullhorns on the back of the head. <laughs> I didn't, or didn't really see it. It's a real weird like, anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, it's to really um, sink the fact in that they are hunters. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're different guys. Um, so... <laughs> Dean kind of again, like, is making fun of Sam. This whole damn job's bugging me. I thought the legend said that Mordecai only goes after chicks. It does. All right. Well, I mean, that explains why he went after you, but why me? Hilarious. Like, come on. (laughs) Come on. I I love that Sam doesn't rise to his stupid jokes. Like, he never really does. He's just, he's obviously heard them so many times. It's like, yeah, ha, 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 you're so funny. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely like a... I've been around my brother too much. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they kind of, again, sort of realise that nothing is syncing up. Like, the, the stories that they're hearing isn't matching the ghosts that they're seeing. It's not acting like a proper ghost because rock salt doesn't affect it. There's a few things coming together. And and the fact that ghosts are, like, consistent. Like, it's usually, like, if they've got an axe, it's always going to be an axe, whereas this is changing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And then Sam realizes that these new details about him having an axe and some other things um, are on the website. Like the stories about them have been up on the website. And then Dean realizes something as well. <laughs> yeah. His his face is of like, I got it. It was so good. It was so good. Like it like the smug like eyebrow raise and like cheeky smile i don't know i i liked it it was good (laughs) so they go back to the record store and so and they confront 
Craig again. And Dean's kind of flicking through the records and he finds what he's looking for. And lo and behold, it's got the symbol on it. It's the symbol that Blue Oyster Cult use on basically all of their albums. This kind of hook with the circle and the lines coming out the top. Mm -hmm. They confront Craig and get the story out of him that this is all made up. Like him and his cousin Dana were bored. (laughs) (laughs) So they made this old creepy haunted house and then kind of spread the legend around. So it even shows him like stringing up those chicken feet. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And they've chosen a load of different symbols and things from different books and records and all sorts. So Mm -hmm. this guy's pretty freaked out because he's like, well, I know it's made up, but people are still, well, you know, someone's dead. Yeah. Um, So yeah, pretty scary for him. Mm -hmm. So so I I like how Dean says, um, are are you a fan of Blue Oyster Cult? Uh, That I wrote here, we all are after faith. (laughs) It's so true. This, do you know what? If it hadn't, if it hadn't been Kansas, it would have been Blue Oyster Cult, right? I think As so. The theme tune. I feel like they could have chosen like Dust in the Wind, or I don't. Don't Fear the Reaper would have been a good like song as well to have as a sort of theme. And I guess Kansas was unintentional, maybe. But yeah, if it wasn't that, it would have been been one of those like, mm-hmm. i strongly feel that in my heart <laughs> well i don't know because like as we've as we said the the framing of this story at first was about sam yeah so in in john's eyes sam would have oh, i can't i can't no i don't want to do it because i'm gonna start fucking uh, no anyway basically <laughs> it comes down to it comes down to maybe like the the song kind of correlates with the original theme of the the season. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to talking about that in our uh, season one Ugh. wrap up. <laughs> Ugh, I'm not. Anyway, that means I have to listen to it, and I can't. <laughs> that that song makes me cry, but not in a good way. <laughs> I have not been able to listen to that song. Do you know what? Ever. But like, it, it wasn't even the final season. I've always found it hard to listen to. So I guess Kansas is just not a good band for you, apparently. <laughs> yeah, if you want to make me cry, it's apparently play Kansas. <laughs> I didn't know that about myself. I, I don't want to know it. <laughs> well, maybe maybe find a different, like, I haven't listened to all of their music. I've, I think I've listened to a, no, a point of no return. But maybe maybe find another one that's less... <laughs> traumatic <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe maybe I should do that that's fine oh. it's, it's anyway. bad when ACDC makes you like a little bit emotional like, that that shouldn't happen that shouldn't happen this anyway. is very true huh. so we go back to the motel and um, Sam is getting a shower and, and Dean is putting itching powder in his clothes <laughs> while they're talking through the door about what this might be Mm-hmm. Uh, just... yeah sam sam has like an indication of what it might be but doesn't really say what it is and then okay this feels so wrong but i'm <laughs> gonna say it anyway because <sighs> sam in a towel is not bad and i feel gross because he's like 23 maybe and i'm 30 so it feels weird to be saying it about someone that young is but He's very pretty to look at. <laughs> <laughs> the fan service was real. Um, it was. Yes. Yeah. And, and definitely that was the o- only reason for that scene. I'm, I'm so well, confused. I'm so confused about who who they thought was watching Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I mean, it's the the reason why they well they I guess they didn't have they could have cut it. It was obviously this the prank is what they were trying to get to that's true right so that's why like he would but like okay well okay sorry i'm i'm going back and forth on this okay <laughs> whenever whenever i travel to somewhere like i guess they're comfortable with each other because to just like leave their clothes out and just come out on a towel or whatever but like don't you take your clothes into the bathroom with you yeah. and get changed in the bathroom and then come out so 
Yeah, you're completely right. And also, like, I read on IMDb on the trivia part of this episode that apparently this was in response to people asking to, <laughs> to see <laughs> them shirtless more. And I'm like, who? Who was asking that? I mean, I don't know. Like, this is the thing because I was maybe involved in the fandom from probably. I would say 2010. I think that's probably my earliest estimate. So I don't know what it was like um, mm-hmm. before that. So um, maybe there was. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know about it. I wanted, I'm going to do some more research on the fandom from uh, 2005 to 2010 when I, I don't know much about it. I think it would be mm-hmm. really interesting to do. Definitely. And like it, again, it would have been a different experience because we don't... like. We didn't have Tumblr then. We didn't have Twitter, Facebook. Uh, MySpace was a thing at that point. I think I was on um, Bebo. Oh yeah, that was Bebo. I forgot about Bebo. Yeah, but like, where would you go? Like, is there, is there like a supernatural, to early two thousands, or late two thousands, um, uh, website that like was made? Yeah, <laughs> like very I- much like how, Hel- like very much like Hellhounds Lair. I know a lot of uh, I know a lot of fandom happened on Live Journal, but I was oh, too right. I was way too cool for Live Journal, so I just used Dead Journal. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> no one find that. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so I don't know uh, I about these kinds of fandom spaces back then. I need to do some more history. I think, mm-hmm. mm. and you could always use the Wayback Machine as well. That's that's usually a good place to start too. Exactly, yeah, definitely good for any deep diving. But yeah, so it, it made me think about it because I was like, yeah, who is this? Who who is this? His fan service for? Um, and how did how did they get in contact with them? Did they like call them or something? <laughs> Are like, you mailing letters in? Like, I really think that you should be showing um, more of these actors with their shirts off. Thanks. <laughs> Love the show. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey cool out if you have any experiences from to you know early supernatural fandom that you would like to share with us please do so i oh, yes. again we- genuinely interested i would be happy to talk to you about your experiences so they are now back at the diner area of yep. the restaurant <laughs> yes and like sam is like oh, i was gonna say that sam is like awkwardly moving around like his <laughs> hips and stuff and they're like they're picking up a coffee, I guess, or some sort of drink. Sam's explaining that in Tibet there was a group of monks, about twenty monks, who were uh, meditating on a golem, and they they managed to bring it to life using this tulpa symbol. And knowing that the that Craig and Dana had just sort of used theology books and just spray were spray painting symbols mm-hmm. everywhere, they probably didn't even know that. It's what they had sprayed on on the walls a tulpa symbol yeah so he's like saying can you imagine how many people like imagine now thousands of people believing in the story now it's like real yeah. so this is where like the two months earlier actually makes sense yeah because you've got that time gap for people to change the lore essentially um, mm-hmm. with their minds i think the idea of a tulpa is really interesting i don't know where this has come from whether this was made for this episode whether it's actually uh like a mythological thing um, it, it's real okay cool mm-hmm. that's pretty wicked <laughs> i like what dean said say like oh i believe in santa and like why don't i get hooked up every christmas <laughs> santa says like you're a bad person <laughs> and he's like oh yeah that's true <laughs> which is i mean he has to put itching powder in his clothes so that. yeah mm-hmm. so yeah I, I really like the idea of this see they say that um, american god was a inspiration for but uh for Kripke. Um, mm-hmm. and they kind of point to scarecrow for this but actually i think the idea of a tulpa kind of links to that more the belief uh giving things life and uh sort of shaping how it acts it mm-hmm. tends to lean into those tropes more and it's something that uh weaves through a lot of like neil gaiman stories this idea that that belief can make things real and then also that they can sort of disappear if people don't believe in them anymore. So I really like it. It's one of my favourite sort of um, storytelling things <laughs> mm-hmm. that, that Neil Gaiman does. And uh, 
yeah I, I maybe this is why i like this episode so much because yeah the, the tulpa <laughs> thing is pretty cool uh the the, the video that was uploaded because uh ed and harry had recorded like i guess they they kind of saw the ghost mm -hmm. in the in the video i'm i'm not really sure like if it was actually visible but after after the release of that video the the website has now got like thousands of hits tens of thousands of hits and so more people are believing in it so like it's just gonna get stronger and stronger yeah they kind of realized that harry and ed aren't helping the situation with their website um and yeah. they're, they're making it way worse and they even say like oh how do you kill an idea they mm -hmm. don't really know how to, how to deal with this so as as they're leaving, Sam's like still squirming around, and he says like, "Oh, I think I'm allergic to our soap." And like Dean's laugh is so good. Man, I think I'm allergic to our soap or something. <laughs> you did this? <laughs> You're a friggin' jerk. Oh yeah. Because Sam really knows that he did that to him. I I like that as they leave. Like Sam's in such a hurry to leave that he um, like wobbles the table. And yeah. I, I, I just really thought like I wonder if that was like a bad take and they just kept it in because it was like quite good so he was just like nearly pushed that table over <laughs> trying to get up yeah I think so too so we are now at the Hellhound caravan or RV and we see Ed and Harry like arguing <laughs> Harry is really against going back to the house and does, just doesn't want to have anything to do with this mm -hmm. anymore and then Ed he's he's that really annoying one of those really annoying nerds <laughs> he thinks that like this ghost hunting thing is gonna equal girls and sex with real girls <laughs> it's just like why ugh, no like why? it's yeah it's just it's so i don't like it <laughs> because <laughs> no. there's people like that that actually exists and we we s the consequences of these these people are very real and like yeah hmm. anyway getting a little serious there but anyway, <laughs> it's just i i don't like that this character yeah i i think they kind of maybe drop that a bit more in the other episodes yeah. that they're in I um, so and they're not so hmm, i don't know how i would describe this like <laughs> He seems like the type of person who would uh, question you about your fandom knowledge at a convention. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. What's going on with you, Ed? So one of the ways he tries to talk Harry back into going is he says WWBD. Be brave. Okay, WWBD. What would Buffy do? Huh? What would Buffy do? I know, but Ed, she's stronger than me. It's okay. <laughs> who is it? Come on out of here, guys. We hear you in there. Oh, I love it. Which, of course, stands <laughs> for uh, What Would Buffy Do? And I love <laughs> Harry's comeback to this. It's like, I know, but she's stronger than me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> yeah. And then I think it's so funny that they're talking about uh, Buffy when Dean, like, bangs on their trailer because if Dean Winchester has any female contemporary it's Buffy Summers. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You are right. <laughs> Buffy's at the door! <laughs> That's um, so funny. Yeah. They call them out of the trailer. <laughs> they, they want them to shut down the website. Uh, it's quite funny because I, I felt here that like Sam was trying to be good cop and Dean was being bad cop. And then when they realised that kind of wasn't working... Sam came up with something else, and Dean just went along with it. So I actually I did I think they they had already come up with this idea ah. because they have the they have a death certificate of Mordecai Murdoch, which they know is not real. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I didn't think so. so that it, it was it was a whole act from the beginning because um, they're like, oh, you know, we we found out the secret, but like we will only tell you if you shut down the website, mm -hmm. like. Well, so they, they, they first of all directly ask them. And then they say, when Harry and Ed are like, huh, no, we're going to try and get famous, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. They're like, well, we have the secret about the house. You guys can have it, but you have to shut it down. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely shut it down. Like, 
they, well they so Sam and Dean walk away and like you know play mind games basically <laughs> Um, reverse psychology is strong <laughs> yes <laughs> basically and they're like wait 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 and they sort of run after him run after Sam and Dean they, they basically tell tell them that they can kill the monster because uh, he he had actually died via gunshot and he's deathly afraid of 45 caliber bullets with iron rod whatever <laughs> I don't don't know anything about bullets don't really care <laughs> <laughs> And that's the only way to kill the son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I like that they were obviously very being very specific to guns that they had on them. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it probably like it'd be interesting to know for anybody who um, knows about weaponry, like guns in particular. So this Murdoch guy was supposed to have lived in the 1930s. Yeah. Did a gun like that exist in the 1930s? That's a good point because when they go back to the house, they definitely have like modern handguns. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. I love that Harry and Ed just went with that. You're probably right. I reckon it probably doesn't match up at all. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, Harry and Ed take this information and immediately run back to their trailer. Like, they're definitely going to post it online. <laughs> even, I think even Ed says, like, stop running. You're, like, you're being too enthusiastic or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's, it's too funny too funny so they're they're now sam and dean are now at a a, a different diner and there's this like laughing f- hunter like uh fisherman it's got a really annoying like laugh if you pull that string one more time i'm gonna kill you <laughs> Yeah. And Dean keeps pulling the string to make it laugh. It's kind of like that singing fish thing that you can push a button and it sings. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Sam's reaction is a little bit extreme. He's like, you pull it again, I'll kill you. I'm I mean, like, oh, okay. you don't know how many times he's pulled it, though. You don't know <laughs> how true. many times. <laughs> That's true. That They're at the end of their meal, so I'm sure they've already been there for at least a good, I don't know, 30 <laughs> minutes or so. I just love that, like, with a complete deadpan staring Sam straight in the eyes, he pulls it again. <laughs> because, I mean, who hasn't done that to their sibling? Like, who hasn't? Like, stop yeah, doing true. the thing like, and you immediately do it again. Yep. We're terrible and people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Sam, Sam's sam got his trusty, dust, trusty computer with him and has confirmed that the legend has now been added to um <laughs> himosukai should now be vulnerable to their bullets yes and you know they're, they're sort of making a plan of what they're going to do dean takes a drink of his beer and sam <laughs> sam's face is like so like are you gonna pick it up are you gonna pick it up are you gonna pick it up? and then then when he does he's he's he does not have a good poker face, basically, is what it comes down to. Because <laughs> now Dean's hand is glued to his beer. <laughs> yeah, like super glued as well. Super glued. Super glued. <laughs> you didn't. Oh, I did. <laughs> Like Sam is just like laughing it up, like fully laughing it up. And you know what? You deserve that retaliation. Yeah, <laughs> the so. itching powder definitely um, allows for the glue. I think so. <laughs> huh. So I guess there was an ad break that I really like this transition because uh, like Sam pulls the puppet again, like it's like, mm-hmm. ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and then it was kind of an ad break. And then you kind of come back and they're in the woods and the, the like cops are patrolling and then you hear the like, ah, ha, 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 like creepy <laughs> puppet laugh. That's really good. Um, Definitely. And they, so they go check it out, these two policemen. It's just like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so do you think they just like, they bought it from the diner just to do that? I thought that like, did they buy this or did they somehow steal it? Because <laughs> it's a big thing. If they stole that, that's, almost a skill that I'm scared of at that point like how did you steal that maybe they I think I reckon they probably bought it well so I was also thinking like so so Dean has been pulling that string like all day right all, <laughs> all that all that mail can you imagine the other patrons in the in the 
restaurant, they yeah. probably would have begged them to take it. <laughs> take it. Take it, please. We realize it was a bad thing to have on the wall. We hate it. Take it, please. If you like it so much. So, I mean, they successfully use it as a distraction. And I really like the visual of them, like, setting that up to keep laughing and, like, having to, like, run away from it. <laughs> like, go, go, go. So they, they get back in the house. This joke. Dean says, oh, I barely have any skin left on my hand. And Sam says, I'm not touching that line with a 10-foot pole. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't hear that. I, I must have been distracted, but <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I don't think I recognised that one the first time I watched that either, but okay. Okay. Uh, I wonder how much of this episode is written and how much is improv. Um, and then they kind of hearing noise and it's harry and edda back <laughs> yeah um, sam and dean like turn around and they nearly shoot them i swear mm-hmm. <laughs> they've been hearing a noise through a door and they're kind of having a back and forth i think dean says like go and open the door then you know you're kind of yeah. like you're the paranormal investigators go for it and then the ghost tulpa thing bursts through and uh they lay into it with their with their guns but it has no effect on the the spirit. But it like it does disappear. So they have a chance to like interrogate Ed and Harry and be like, what happened? And they say that their servers crashed, so nobody could read. So okay, the only thing that I don't quite understand with that though is that Sam is able to read that the that is on the website. So maybe it crashed after that. Yeah, so, my 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 thought with that was like they had it up. And then maybe some people had read it, but it hadn't been enough people right. when the server crashed to generate that psychic power to actually mm-hmm. get it to change. There was still enough people thinking about the old article. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Then the spirit, I, I'm calling it a spirit because I don't know what else it could really <laughs> yeah. be. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's fine. Chases Ed and Harry and they're like <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> um, and they get cornered and then Sam taunts it manages to like start fighting it i love that ed and harry are trying to exercise it <laughs> yes <laughs> the power of christ compels you yeah. Was... yeah i mean they they managed to get away and um but sam gets pinned to the wall by the axe and we see dean sort of like throwing liquid on the on the ground like it looks mm-hmm. like it could be like gasoline or something and uh <laughs> he he fight like he he loves his makeshift flamethrowers. Yes. Because he has another one. And for some, well, for some reason, the spirit doesn't like it either and like moves out of the way. So, Because uh, Sam's getting lifted off the ground by this yeah. axe to his throat. Um, like You see his like feet surely going up off mm-hmm. the, on the wall. And so Sam managed to get away and basically Dean is like, we're just going to burn the house down. <laughs> Look... <laughs> It's a plan. No one else had a plan. This is true. No, I mean, not, not, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's yeah. not a bad idea. Explains it that, like, Mordecai can't leave the house. So if there's no house to haunt, then surely it would be gone. And if there's no house to believe in, then. I think so too. And, like, also they're destroying the symbol at the same time, which I know they said doesn't really matter. But I feel like it's a focus. So maybe it would reduce the psychic energy, maybe. Mm-hmm. His, his, Dean's like genuine like I don't know I thought it might work kind of like <laughs> look and Sam's response of like <laughs> what if what if the legend changes and we have to and let Mordecai can leave the house he's like well we'll come back that's a solution for an old damn place in the ground well, no one will go in anymore I mean look Mordecai can't haunt a house if there's no house to haunt it's fast and dirty but it works what if the legend changes again and Mordecai is allowed to leave the house? Well, then we'll just have to come back. Because, like, <laughs> even Sam looks back at him like, we never go back. <laughs> yeah, we never <laughs> God, yeah. It's like, it has to say the same energy as, as Sam in Route 666 being like, well, it worked, though. <laughs> <laughs> when he right. was playing chicken with that truck. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they just do things and it just happens to work out most of the times yes. it doesn't <laughs> no. um, this was their early you know fly by their pants days <laughs> beginner's luck maybe anyway. yeah definitely um, but sam says it here it's kind of makes you wonder 
Of all the things we hunted, how many existed just because people believed in them? And I put, mm. I think Dean is genuinely having some kind of like ex <laughs> existential like crisis. His face, yes. he's like, but what if it is true? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, well, so after, after he said that, I was like, yes and no, because mm. sometimes, because they, they can find the real people behind the story. So, but then again, if you believe that real person is doing such things, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, it makes it good. It's cool no, no, yeah, because, no. like, um, yeah. What if these are shaped by those things? I think there are a few instances where it could be, like, where mm -hmm. lore has matched up so closely with what they're finding that you're like, maybe it is shaped like that. I think Scarecrow could have been a tulpa because the people brought over their idea of what that god was. Yeah. And then they Definitely. kind of shaped it. Okay, all right, here's, here's the million dollar question. Are Sam and Dean tulpas? Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm not laughing. You know, <laughs> yes. Eventually, yes. Because yeah. if you think about it, when Chuck gets introduced... Ooh, just, just take that one away with you. Mull it over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Mull it. <laughs> I love that. I'm not gonna forget this. I think this whole idea is gonna. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm on a. I'm on a path. That I don't know how to get off of. Um, <laughs> Which you know could. At what point do you think the tulpa, like Sam and Dean tulpa, is um, like diverted? Like at at this point that they could be real people, but yeah. at what point does it become? We are now following the tulpa, Sam See, and Dean. I took it the other way around because Sam says, well, once tulpas are created, they take on a life of their own. So, anyway. Oh. Look, yeah. I'm getting too far into it now, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, looking forward to those conversations. So after, you know, Dean has this crisis of, of faith in monsters, um, <laughs> <laughs> they go back and they see... Harry and Ed, and they are packing up their ca caravan, and they're moving on out because apparently they got a call from some producers who want to make uh, their story about the Hell House into a motion picture and and create the RPG. Now, this is the only out of character thing. Well, I don't know actually that Dean has said, and he's like, "What's an RPG?" And I'm like, "You don't, you don't." I thought, I thought you would know. Yeah. But maybe it goes um, with your technophobe theory. Because um, mm -hmm. yeah. he's he's more TV than he has like video games or board games. Yes, actually, you are correct. Um, uh, yeah, and I think as he gets more into internet stuff, as he gets older and nerdier, I think yes, he would he would know what an RPG is. So maybe yeah, he wouldn't know at this point. He's too much of a man's man with his classic rock and his car. And he hasn't fully embraced the nerd side yet, other than to make jokes. Um, <laughs> yep, and they're off to Hollywood to go make this movie. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, yep. <laughs> as they drive off and out of earshot, Sam says that he called them, <laughs> pretending to be a producer, and that Dean put a dead fish in their backseat. Um... <laughs> No. I have a confession to make. What's that? I, uh, I was the one who called them and told them I was a producer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm the one who put the dead fish in their backseat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Truce? Yeah, truce. At least for the next hundred miles. Like, one is much more subtle than the other. <laughs> <laughs> Both so very mean. Very mean. Because <laughs> like they're moving states, <laughs> and te Texas to to LA is not a short drive. I know from where I am to California, it takes like three days if you go straight through, <laughs> and I think you get to Texas in like day one and a half. Because <laughs> Texas is huge, yeah. it takes forever. Even when you fly, it takes like two hours to get across Texas. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no state should be that big. No. Anyway, so Sam and Dean, like, they, they come to a truce because they both pulled a prank on, on these guys. So they're like, haha, this is good. 
this is good. Yeah. And uh, Dean's like, well, at least for the next couple of miles. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and then they drive off. So, last bit of music. The song as they're driving off is Burning For You by Blue Oyster Cult. But yeah, uh, I love that there's a nod to the fact that they'll continue um, sort of I like these little jokes. I like it. I like it. Do you know what? This wasn't a, like a really story driven heavy episode. We didn't Not really all. find out much about them and stuff, but we find out more about their personalities, like the minutia of their lives, mm-hmm. which is what I said I wanted. And I got it. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is definitely a good, like, this is a good fleshing out of characters episode. Yes. And they, they kind of, you kind of see how they interact with like, I don't want to say the public, but like un uh, unprofessionals as <laughs> like they they uh, Ed and Harry refer to them as professionals, but like how how they truly react to people who who do this for fun, I guess. I yeah. mean, we we kind of see that with um, in Asylum. Like Dean was really frustrated with the the two uh, the two the couple that was in the Asylum. We kind of know that he gets frustrated with that kind of stuff but yeah to really see him like have to continually interact with fools it's kind of fun (laughs) yeah i think it comes from a place of um these people are seeking out these things through choice and for Mm -hmm. dean it's not a choice it's a vocation right he has no uh, like he has no other options at this point other than to do this job so i guess he probably finds it frustrating for the people who do have a choice to go seek these things out or be ignorant of them maybe he'd like to have that choice himself just get sad for a moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's definitely more irritated by it than sam yeah. i think i think sam shows his irritation a bit in this episode though as well <laughs> so i think he shows his irritation for like their attitude rather than what they're doing yeah yeah i think you're right and also because there's a lot of joking around in this episode a lot of the jokes he plays is clearly just trying to like have a joke with Dean. Yeah. You know, some things that'll make him laugh. So mm-hmm. that's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, yeah. Overall, really liked it. I'm looking forward to the Ghost Facers episode. Um, yes. Again. So, yeah. I, mean, there's, I think there's a couple, right? It's not just I think enough. there's a couple. I feel like there's maybe some extra bits on some DVDs as well, uh, which I'll have to discuss with those. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice 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 so uh next week's episode is something wicked it immediately makes me think, <sighs> think of witches i think you're probably right uh with that i like i've said before i don't remember any like the rest of season one no clue it's actually pretty highly rated though this is 8.7 hmm. so yeah, it's probably gonna it. be a good one and this oh okay this is okay this is a the one of our first like childhood flashbacks, um, so I don't remember who, because they they have different people play young Sam and Dean like throughout the seasons. Mm-hmm. That it comes to a point where there's one consistent person who plays a young Sam for for a good amount of time, but I'm not sure if it's this episode or not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no. I all I remember is witches. That that's my thoughts on, on that one. So. <laughs> We'll see. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. So thanks again, Purgatory Pals, for uh, taking a jaunt with us into Supernatural Purgatory. This week there was a cabin in the woods and it was really scary. Um, (laughs) But next week, uh, maybe we'll find our way out. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) 